right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. I have a returning guest. We actually, it's been a, a 13 months since we last talked. Oh, wow. um, yeah, and you have a different last name too. It's Kelly Kelly. <laughs> welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so so um, when, when you change your name to Kelly Kelly, uh, mm-hmm. I was asking, I was thinking, I'm like, with like when he when she was dating him at the time and it was getting close to like you know <laughs> answering the questions we were like oh shit they're like i'm gonna have two first names yep yeah i uh actually he tricked me i didn't know that kelly was his last name for like the first i don't know month or so that we were how, talking how do you know, how do you not know that <laughs> Because we originally, it was all long distance. It was, we met in a gym originally, but it, we saw each other for like a day. And um, and then we just kind of started chatting online. It started like trash talking about open workouts and, you know, um, that kind of like slowly turned into flirting and turned it, you know, kind of snowballed from there. But it was mostly like, you know, Instagram messages and and things like that. And his Instagram handle at the time was Lance Steele. And so I thought his last name was Steele. (laughs) (laughs) Kelly Steele has a great ring to it. (laughs) I I like that. I do like that. Yes. 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 Yeah. And by the time I, uh, when I realized his last name was Kelly, I actually swore him to secrecy. I wouldn't let him tell my teammates because I was like, you cannot, I will never hear the end of this. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh that's that's hilarious so um i know you said you guys met at a gym so mm-hmm. were you was, were you guys in california or wh- where were you guys when you first met uh we were in california uh i was trading out of um what was then diablo moxie in san jose and um he was working for i don't know if you remember paleo ethics was yes a, yep. yeah supplement company that used to sponsor the crossfit games um And so he was their like event sales athlete manager guy. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was doing like a California tour. He was just like bouncing from gym to gym all the way up California. Um, But he's Canadian. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. So we met in a gym while he was doing like a sample day and he jumped into one of our workouts and yeah, that was it. I, I for, for a second, before you said he was uh, Canadian, I I really thought he was Irish because like the last name Kelly. And I was like, (laughs) I was like, okay, he might be from Ireland, and then you know, yeah, he's hard... like two generations removed from Ireland, but okay. Irish Canadian, okay. yeah. <laughs> All right, very cool, very cool. So, um, so what? So, with the marriage and everything like that. So, how did he propose? And and like, was it like eventful? Was it in a box? Or like, where where was the yeah. engagement? Uh, well, the engagement was super eventful. Uh, I guess. Well, I guess it was eventful for us. Um, but it was cool. It, um, we were actually in Brazil for the Brazil CrossFit championship. And, um, we had just finished competing. We missed the games by one spot. (laughs) So we, um, but we planned to stay an extra week in, in like the Northern beaches area, just to have some vacation time Mm -hmm. after we were done competing. Um, and, we hiked up to this like beautiful waterfall area. It was a little bit of a treacherous hike. There were like warning signs for yellow fever and we like, but we found this waterfall um, and we're swimming around the waterfall and Lance for some reason is like getting really sketchy about going in the water. (laughs) um, He like, didn't want to go in the water. And when he did, he was like swimming really awkwardly. I was getting very concerned that he was like going to go over the waterfall. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, and eventually he like comes out on this rock um, and he just, you know, got down on one knee and proposed that he was swimming awkwardly because he was trying to figure out how to not lose the ring. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So he proposed under a waterfall in Brazil. That's awesome. So uh, that's kind of like, I mean, that's more eventful than my proposal yeah. to my wife. So, so we were like big bike riders at the time. And so I, I, I called off sick to work so I can go by the ring and go home. And so 
the next day we went on a bike trip. And so we went to, I think it was, we parked someplace and then we went to Gloucester, Massachusetts because we were living in New Hampshire at the time. Okay. And so, and so I was like trying to get her all fired up for some reason. I was just like, Hey, I didn't go to work that day, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know? And she's like, what do you mean? And then like, it wasn't, she wasn't really like getting pissed. She's like, what the, what the fuck's wrong with you? Part of my French. And so she's like, like what's going on? And so I, I went down on one knee and proposed to her right in front of like the Gloucester fisherman in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And so <laughs> she was like, well, I mean, she was shocked. So you didn't realize yeah. it was going to happen. And the whole time before that, so I'm wearing a bike jersey and I had the ring in the box wrapped up in a t-shirt and just tucked it in one of the back pockets. Mm -hmm. And so, and so I told, I told him like, listen, you need to stay in front of me the whole time because you know, I don't want anything to happen to you, you know, and you can blatantly see the box out of the back of the <laughs> back of the shirt. So I was just like, I was like, you got to stay up front. And so finally, like I took it out and it was like, I was like, Hey, I need to go to the bathroom. So I tucked it. I, I typically, if we're like going to sit down and eat, I put shorts on cause I'm wearing biker shorts. It's a little awkward to be yeah. honest with you. Like, I don't know. I don't know how all those old dudes do it, but I, I'm like, I got to wear shorts. So I put shorts on yeah. and I put the ring inside the compression shorts. So she wouldn't realize it. Cause like when we were walking, she put her hands behind my back. And so she actually, yeah, if it was still there, she would have noticed it. But, um, well, so of course she said yes. And um, we were riding back and she had two flat tires. Oh no. On the way back. And so I like I fixed the <laughs> I fixed the first one. And then all of a sudden like it happened. Yeah, it happened again. <laughs> and then it another flat, and I'm like sitting there like crap. And then like before that, she's like riding her bike and the handlebars, and she you could see her go like this. Yeah, and like look, look at it, looking at the ring, yeah. and I'm like, I, I'm like eyes of the road, eyes of yeah. the road. And then, so finally, she had two flat tires, and I literally had to like, she had to park underneath the tree, and I had to like literally speed to the back to the car to get her get her back. And I'm like, I'm so sorry this is happening to you. She's like, I don't even care. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's Nothing if that's can the worst thing. Today. Yeah. Yeah. If that's the worst thing, I'll I'll, I'll take it. So. Yeah. But um. But That's yeah, awesome. so what once you got proposed, uh, mm -hmm. and you said yes, so like how far along was it before you actually had a ceremony or anything like that? Well, we after that, we have done everything backwards. Uh, <laughs> um, we actually have not had a um, an actual wedding yet. <laughs> okay. Um, hopefully that will happen someday, but we um we had to do the legal wedding. We did the legal wedding actually pretty quickly after that, maybe a few months later, um, because like I said, he's Canadian. And so we had to start the green card process. So we were like, okay, do like the thing at the courthouse with the paperwork to start his green card application. Um, and then COVID happened and everything got shut down. Yeah. And so his green card got frozen. The consulates were all closed for like, six months or more um his green card took like a year and a half longer than we thought because everything went back up and they were backed up um and so we were living in two different countries and i was like i'm not planning a wedding in while we're like in two different countries yeah, like not you know, like, yeah. um yeah he couldn't he wasn't allowed to like live or work in the united states yet so like we were like coming back and forth on visitors visas and um yeah. So then he finally got here. Um, he got here, his green card two a little over two years ago now. Okay. Um, yeah. And honestly, like, it's just been like, all right, now we're settling in and building careers and starting to plan a family and kind of like weddings, like so far, yeah. like we got married so far in the past that we're like, do we have a wedding now? Like, is it? <laughs> Save, save, save your money, save your money. Like, I know it's kind of a weird thing to, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so my wedding only had 55 people in the wedding. Nice. And so yeah. like super small, like I wasn't really expecting, like, I, I didn't want too many people. Yeah. And so, and I thought 55 was great. And like, I think we, I think in total was like 10 grand or something like that. Yeah. That's awesome. But like weddings are stupid expensive they're stupid expensive and we're not like big event people anyway that's not yeah. really like our jam um but we are big on like you know having our family with us and you know like we have close family connections but it gets hard because we like his family's all in canada i have a really mm. big family they're 
all over the U.S. You know, he's super social. He has friends everywhere. Um, so there's a lot of like international travel that has to happen. Like, how mm. do you have a small event with all of that? It like kind of just doesn't work. Like yeah. the smallest we can make it is still <laughs> way bigger than we want it to be. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I had a friend. I had a friend. I had a friend of mine that was actually in the wedding. He actually did a plus one, and I'm like, "Buddy, you haven't had a girlfriend in like more than, more than a year." And who's your plus one? Who? Some random person? And I'm like, "No, you can't. You can't pull that stuff. Sorry, sorry." And I'm like, "I, I, I'm like, we can't afford that." So I hate to break it to you, but yeah. um, yeah. I, I mean, it's great and all to have like pictures and right. all that stuff, but it's just like, I mean, she's never put on her wedding dress. Like we've been together for like. 13 years yeah. and so it's like never never put the wedding dress on it's like literally sitting in a container down here in the basement <laughs> so it's like she's like i might just get rid of it i'm like no keep it and i'm like but then i'm like realize that i'm like you thought about putting it on <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm like i'm like what are you what are you gonna do with it i'm like i don't know maybe give it to give it to our daughter who knows but she's four so we'll see yeah <laughs> oh five sorry five so but i'm like yeah, it's it's crazy. But um, since you guys are married, do you feel anything different from being married to not being married? Uh, for us, no. Um, I think that the biggest change for us came when he got his green card and he got to like actually move here. That was when things felt like they were different. I think. Okay. It was just, and then like doing all of the adulting things you know like the, the was like a surprising number of things that had to happen with like you know bank accounts and taxes and insurance <laughs> and, you know health care and like he's yep. like he's canadian he's like what's what do you mean health care like i have to pay for that <laughs> shit you know like <laughs> yeah. yeah so it's like um like all of those things um i think those things were like the biggest change and then um yeah, just like actually like living together. It took us a while to get like, um, I don't know, to get like comfortable and confident that we were like together and like going to be actually physically together for the long term. Because yeah. yep. we'd done the long distance for so many years and it was all like, especially with COVID, it was so much like, am I going to be allowed to travel to see you? Are you going to be allowed to come to see me with all the like travel restrictions and things like that? Um, and so I think for the first like several months, probably like five or six months after he got here and like moved in, we still, you know, when you're long distance, you don't get a lot of time physically present. So when you do see each other, you like do everything together. You're like wanting to maximize your time together. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, it was probably like, I don't know, like five or six months in where I was like, okay, I think I can go to the grocery store by myself. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, you go to the bathroom? Let me go with you. So. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, we were like so attached at the hip when we were together, just because that was like our, our autopilot. Like when we were together, we were like, oh, we might, you know, like we only get so much time together and then you're going to have to leave. So we have to like, spend as much time together as possible. And then, you know, we finally settled into like, Oh no, this is like for real forever. So <laughs> it's going to be that's okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah that, that's so cool. That's so yeah. cool. Um, so uh, oh, no, also it must be a real pain in the ass changing your last name. Cause I know for my wife, she had like a hard time too. Uh, for, to be honest, I haven't even done that yet because it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> it's only, it's Instagram official. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Legally official yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're just like, I'll just wait till the last minute. So I mean, pretty much, pretty much. It, um, uh, although I, it was one of those things where I've, I did put it on like the, um, marriage license when you applied, it was like, they ask you to write the name that you're gonna take. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they said that that makes it easier. So fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. So, um, but you also might, must be excited too for Michigan winning the national championship. Hell yeah. Go blue. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, 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 think, I think we talked last time. Like I'm a huge Michigan fan. So because like up North, right. we don't, we, we've never had, uh, we don't really have like college teams. I mean, we have BC. They were like good with like hockey and stuff okay, like that, but yeah. their, fo their football team's like, okay. But like, no one really pays attention to it that much, except for like when Matt Ryan was there. But other than that, it's just like, eh. 
And so I couldn't, I needed to find a team. So I was like, Michigan, was Michigan. It. Yeah. And I was it's like, it's a good over. choice. It's yeah. a good choice. If yeah. you got a big one, <laughs> listen, I've, I've been there for the hard times and I've been there for the good yep. times. So it's like not, not changing. I know so. it's been a while since we had a really good season like this last one. It was, yeah. this was really cool. Yeah. So what was going with, like when you were watching the national championship, like what was, like, were you like watch the whole thing where it was like jumping up and down, like going crazy? <laughs> no, I'm not that much of a fan. I, uh, I love sports when they're live. Like I will tend, uh, like being in the big house for a game is like awesome. The most incredible thing. Um, yeah. and there's just like nothing else that even comes close to it mm-hmm. that I've experienced, yeah. even in professional sports. I've, I haven't been to any professional game that can top you know, being in a Michigan game. Um, and, and and it's cool when you know people and you're watching it live. I have a really hard time sitting in front of TV. I just can't. Yeah, I, yeah. It's just like, I can't sit still that long. I don't like the TV. We don't watch TV at home. I don't even, I think my TV might turn on if I tried, but I haven't tested it in so long that it might not. <laughs> so... <laughs> um yeah i i am not good about that so i like follow like keeping up with the score and stuff and i get texts from all my friends and family um updates but i was in the gym training <laughs> okay i mean i mean to be honest with you i was doing a podcast with with uh, right, Z- yeah. with, with xander vick xander. And, uh, and hannah hardy sorry uh, hannah hardy so i was like yeah. doing all i did with them and i was just like my son was like yelling down the, down the stairs he's like they just scored a touchdown. Oh, oh nice. Yes. So, but <laughs> awesome. uh, yeah, yeah. It was like it was so funny because like I scheduled it, and Xander's like, you know, the national championship is on that Monday, right? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah. But I, I still gotta, <laughs> I still gotta do something. So, but it's okay. But yeah. uh, but yeah. So um, you were talking about CrossFit and training and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. you, you actually just did. You recently just get your L three. I got my L3 a couple of years ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, um, what, what was the reason why you got that instead of just sticking with like the L1 or L2? Um, I like the um, two reasons, really. Uh, one, I like the accountability for continuing education units. Um, it's just like something that I feel like I like to learn and I like to, um, you know, keep myself progressing. So mm-hmm. I would probably do that on my own anyway, but it kind of just gives me like fixed timelines and deadlines and that helps me, you know, make stuff happen. Yeah. Um, otherwise things just get, you know, like they tend, like things get lost to the bottom of the list if you're not on top of it. So, true, true. Um, so I just liked that level of accountability. And then also um, I knew I wanted to apply for seminar staff at some point. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's, and you got to have your L3 to even think about it. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where, that's where I am now. I'm in the, um, internship program for seminar staff. Oh, very cool. That's cool. So, so how, what's the, uh, what's the internship like for trying to even get onto seminar staff? Um, it's basically like you attend level one seminars and, um, they kind of put you, they give you like progressively more responsibility and they throw you into like teaching some of the, um, the breakout sessions for the movements and, um, give you feedback and an assessment. And then, you know, say, all right, we want you to come back for one more and you do it again and you get more feedback. And then you kind of just progress through that process until they either feel like you're ready or, Feel like it's not a good fit <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i hear you so so um what what have you learned from being a, kind of an intern from the seminar staff that actually helps you do your coaching job too as well um seminar staff is a really it's for me it's a really different environment than coaching in one of my classes mm-hmm. um like the structure is very different. You're looking to, you know, you're in like very like that circle format um, and you're expected to meet very specific timelines um, for how long it takes you to progress through each movement. Um, I think that for so for me, that's been the most challenging part is, you know, like not 
the actual coaching and correcting and um, it, but it, but just like meeting those timelines and following that specific format mm -hmm. um, has just, it just takes like practice, making sure that you know what the flow is and the rhythm and how long everything's going to take. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, but I think the, the coolest thing has just been being around so many coaches that are like several levels up from me. Like these are the most experienced coaches in the world and they just naturally uh, explain things in so few words, but it's so simple and elegant and they, it just like flows out of them. Yeah. Um, that like the caliber of coaching is really cool just to surround myself with. Um, and just try to absorb as many things as I can. To be honest, it's been kind of a fire hose that I'm, I've only <laughs> like done. I've done two seminars now. So I'm, um, but like the first one, I was like, it was like fire hose of information. Um, mm -hmm. And I was just like struggling to take it all in. The second one, I think I took, I was able to take more in and be more present and um, not so nervous. <laughs> But. Yeah, I, I was just gonna say, like that first, <laughs> that first, that first um, session must have been like super nerve wracking. You're like, like I, I don't, I, I'm good not eating because like I can't, I'm not hungry. You know, I was like, you know, just watching everything, and I'm like, okay, like what's going on? And yeah, you know, am I doing things right or whatnot? Yeah, no, I was, I it, it caught me off guard how nervous I was because I didn't, I don't think I really expected to be. I'm like, okay, I have like you know, I have a lot of experience coaching. I'm really confident in my coaching ability. Um, and then I got there and I had this adrenaline rush. Like I just stepped onto a stadium floor and I was just like, Oh, whoa. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So that, that caught me off guard and it definitely, I was like, okay, I gotta <laughs> figure out how to manage this now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, I mean, it also, I think it, it um, you know, the nerves were higher because I was coaching with um, coaches that, uh, I mean, I, I, I knew them, they're friends of mine. Um, I, my first two um, staff members that I was with were Wes Pyatt and Pat Barber. And um, like, they're friends of mine, but they, I also like have a very high level of respect for them as coaches. Like I know who they are and I know the caliber of their coaching. And then to be like, assessed by someone who, um, you know, uh, is at that level, but is also your friend. There's almost more pressure because they're your friend. Like yep. yeah. <laughs> it was almost easier to do it with someone that I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Cause then they're like, you, they like, they say something bad or like the way they critique you, like say, Hey, you know, you did a great job, but you may want to consider doing this way. And if like some random person said it to you, you're like, Oh, okay. But if it's like Wes or like, the, the, you know, anybody else that, you know, you're like, Oh, damn it. I know. Yeah. It's like, I let them down or something, which is totally exactly. not the case. <laughs> yeah. 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 And like, and, and I have a feeling like if, if you're an intern at, this is just my opinion. Um, if you're an intern for the seminar staff, they want you to succeed. It's not like they're yeah. trying to make you fail. So it's just like, you know, obviously you need to take that critique, you know, they faint a heart, but like, just say like, okay, th this is the way I need to do it better. And so, and just do it that way. Yeah, no, I, I have loved that part of it. It's both a, a very supportive um, mm -hmm. environment. They do want you to succeed. They, um, you know, I th like that in that very first assessment, I think really all they're looking for is like, are you the right person? You know, are you the right type of person for the job? They're not really like, you can teach skills and abilities and things like that, but we really can't teach, you know, like, you know, personality and how much you care and, you know, the way that you invest yourself and connect with people and things like that. Um, yeah. So they're just really looking at like, are you the right person for the job? And beyond that, like they want you to succeed. And they're like, these are people who have dedicated their lives to developing new CrossFit coaches. Like they're, they're just as invested in to develop someone who's going to coach those coaches. Um, mm -hmm. Like that's just like what they're passionate about. So um, yeah, super, super supportive environment, um, which, you know, like, on, on, and then on the other side of that, like it's a very rigorous um, coaching environment. Like they're going to give you feedback. They're going to give you, you know, a lot of feedback and even like um, 
you know, even the most experienced seminar staff, like they were giving each other feedback at the end of the seminar, like 10, 15 years into being on seminar staff, you're still getting feedback after every single seminar. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. a process that never ends. Um, and so I think that if you're like, I'm someone who really likes that. I love getting feedback. I love, you know, um, I almost like when you're the most experienced coach in the room and you're not getting feedback anymore, it's really easy to get stagnant and I get bored. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so like, I love that part about it, but definitely like if you're not the right fit for seminar staff and you don't deal with that well, and that's not something you enjoy, then that's going to be a hard time because you're going to get tough. a lot of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, so you've, you've, um, you're pretty successful in CrossFit, I think. So um, you. you've gotten really close to coming to the games, and I, I know am. it's been tough. And so, <laughs> and I, and I, so, how do, how does your mindset like? What's going on with your mindset when like that something happens? Like, do you persevere to like get better, or like what have you been working on to kind of, you know, hump get over that hump to get to the games? Yeah, I mean, to be honest. Um, <laughs> two years ago was supposed to be my last year of competing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and that, or at least the last year that I went, you know, all out for the games. Yeah. Um, and I got so close that, um, uh, honestly, my natural reaction is to like, there's a part of me that's just like, you know, mad, frustrated, you know, like, all right, it just is so motivating for me. Like, all right, now I'm going to just go hit it 10 times harder and like, make sure I make it the next time. Um, and it didn't really work out that way. I ended up with a shoulder injury yep. um, that I sustained at the end of that season that, you know, so like last season didn't go the way that I wanted it to. Um, and this year, our priorities are shifting. Um, and so there's part of me that's like, feels like there's unfinished business. Like there's a, some frustration that, that, um, I didn't get to check that box. Um, but there's also part of me that's really excited for all of the other things that I have planned for my life that I've put on hold, you know, to chase my dream of going to the CrossFit games. Um, and, and those things I'm really excited for also. So there's, Definitely. I think this is going to be a process for me um, of like finding that balance. Every time I, um, every time I, I hit one of those points where I, I, I'm just too competitive, you know, like I don't like losing, you yeah. know, I'm driven yeah. to compete. Mm -hmm. um, and it just makes me, you know, like it just makes me more motivated to win. And I just want to hit the gym and, you know, lock myself in the gym and train my face off until I'm, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. um, but at the same time, like I have to recognize that there are other things that I want in my life that, yeah. you know, you don't get spending six hours a day in the gym. <laughs> no, no, <And> so, <laughs> no. Um, but, yeah. But you did play 17. I, I believe I, I looked at the, I looked at your leaderboard. So, okay. <laughs> it, so it said you were 17th last year worldwide for the 35 to 39 age oh mate yeah i honestly i don't even know what i was in the age groups <laughs> come on so you so do you so do you, do you know do you, would you want to go into masters or do you want to actually go for like the you know i i'm not saying you're not elite but like to the you for know sure. the, the the elite yes. group like because because i have a feeling like you know, maybe the better option is to go masters. Cause I know you have like the seminar staff yeah. and you got, you're married yeah. and all that stuff. So I'm, I'm not trying to tell you what to <laughs> do, but I'm just, I'm just saying like, like, have you thought about doing masters this year at all? A hundred percent. No. And okay. I honestly, like, I love the game so much. Like, yeah, for sure. I'm competing. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's not going to stop. I, um, and I'll, I'll throw my hat into the ring in the masters division. Um, I think that, trying to compete in the open division. Um, you know, I've cut back on my training time, yep. um, to pursue career things and spend time with family. So, um, we'll see how fit I am. Um, 
given the new life priorities. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not putting a ton of pressure on this year in particular, just because there have been a lot of life changes and I'm still kind of like getting my feet underneath me and finding the right rhythm. And I think there will be some iterating and, um, you know, that kind of stuff that needs to happen. But um, I, I can't turn off the <laughs> yeah. the part of me that just loves to compete. Um, I, I, I'll I compete forever, you know, I'm yeah. going to participate in the open. Um, I'll, I'll see where it is. Um, I actually did have a conversation with Hunter. Um, so, so, uh, Hunt, so Hunter is the, uh, one of the coaches at Misfit Athletics for yes. all, the, all the listeners. So, <laughs> yeah, Hunter is um, one of the main coaches at Misfit and he's uh, my personal coach. So um, I work with him individually and um, he, uh, we had a conversation a few months ago. I will, I don't, I'm kind of almost hesitating to put this out there in the world, but maybe <laughs> I probably should. <laughs> Um, I, I basically said like, okay, look, I'm going to tell you this once and then we're not going to talk about it anymore where it's going to like, um, you know, but I, at some point I want to win the master's division. Um, I want to go to the games and I want to win the master's division. Um, doesn't have to be this year or next year, but that's a long-term goal. And now that I've said it, we're not going to talk about it anymore. <laughs> so just, you know, <laughs> yes, yes, where I'm headed and now I'm going to take all the pressure off myself and not think about it again. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it will not be on YouTube forever anymore. Right, so right, right. after this, yeah, so I'm just recording. I'm going to delete this. So it's not, yeah. I won't listen to this again. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, that's awesome. I mean, I, so when I first started doing CrossFit, I was 27 and now I'm like 40, now I'm 44. God, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, so, so it was like, when I was younger, I'm like, all right, I'm all in, let's go to the CrossFit games. And I didn't real I didn't realize like how much dedication it was to even yeah. attempt to do that. Cause I was working a crazy emergency room job working work like being in the military as a reservist in the air force and then trying to train for that and then like i was married at the like i was like i was seriously dating somebody i didn't get married to it later on but i'm like yeah but i'm like man like i i would love to get in the mat like now being like 44 i'm like okay i can try to get into the master's division it would be mm -hmm. great but i'm like i there's a lot of holes i need to i need to work on so yeah. And yeah. my height, my height does not help me out either. So I just, I knew oh, that. Oh no. How tall so, are you? Six, six. Oh dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you can't really yeah. tell in like the videos that I post. You cannot. Or yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, you haven't seen the videos yet. Cause you just followed me like 10 minutes ago. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but it's just like, like pull, like, so the gym that I go to, the pull-up bars are so low. So the yeah. bar is like almost like here mm -hmm. on me. So I can't get like the full extension right. to like butterflies, muscle oh, ups. So it's like deal. Yeah. Yeah. It's super hard. But like I could do handstand walking. I mean, that's yeah. it's just like the pull-up bar and like even like that's tough. E even like handstand push-ups too, to the point. Right. Cause like I have right. I got long arms. So yeah. it's gonna take me a lot longer. So yeah. but you know, just slowly working on those. Yeah, I know. I had a teammate uh, that year, 2019, that we went to Brazil. Um, Connor Schmitz, he was 6'4". And um, yeah, it was handstand pushups were like his kryptonite. It was just mm -hmm. like, he wasn't going to be able to move fast enough, you know, like, and, um, and then in Brazil, the pull-up bars were too short for him. You know, it was like he had his hand on the pull-up bar and his elbows are still bent and his feet are on the floor. Yeah. Um, and we were doing like synchro chest of bar. It was the most awkward, like strict chest of bar frog kip kind of thing. And it just blew him up. Oh, of course. Um, like yeah. so much more muscularly taxing. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's rough. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's hard. And especially like, yeah, it's, it was, it's difficult, but like the weight, like I, me lifting weights, it's like easy. No problem. There you go. Yeah. So no, no problem. <laughs> That's like the one benefit. But, um, I do remember watching a video on misfit where it was like a bunch of the athletes and you were the first person to be on that video of doing that snatch complex. I'm like, 
I was like, damn, she moves so good. It like it like when you walked out and squatted at the bottom, I was just like, wow, that was impressive. And then like and then like later on, like you see Xander and then you obviously you see me and I'm I do like almost a power snatch and I'm like just like flailing all over the place. And I'm like, God, like the the one video you guys post on Misfit Athletics, it's like it has to be this one and compared to like anything else. I'm like, come on, guys. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. But um, so do you do you like kind of try to perfect your lifting technique every day, every week, or like how does how how do you get to those positions that are like just look super solid when you lift? Um, I have I mean, I've been working on it for 14 years. Um, mm -hmm. and I do um I was lucky enough to have really good weightlifting coaches when I very first started. Um, I didn't really have any experience, had zero experience with Olympic lifting. I think the most I'd ever done was like back squats and deadlifts in college. Yeah. Um, and um, was naturally like squatting kind of came naturally to me. That was just something that uh, my body seems to be built for. Um, but I had my very first weightlifting coach was um, in the he was like in the U S Olympic weightlifting program. Um, and he was like so he, a weightlifter. Legit. Yeah. yeah he legit. was legit. Yeah. <laughs> he was legit. Um, so he like taught me from the ground up. So I think that that, um, that helped set a really good foundation for me. I just got really lucky that the gym that I went to, like, that's what he did. Um, and, and then from there, um, I, I like geeking out on really technical things. I'm a mm -hmm. perfectionist and um, I like complexity and I like technique and like deep diving into it. Um, I'm one of those athletes that probably, um, uh, I'm, I'm one of those athletes that asks all the questions. I need to know like the physics of how this works and why you do this and what the, what that's doing in your body and which muscles are activating. And like, you know, like I have to know. Yeah everything yep. like all of the mechanics um and i really like geeking out on that um and and yeah so i have a routine that i go through um it's probably iterated over the years a little bit um but i work positions with an empty barbell every single lifting session um and so i work on you know dialing that in and making that second nature um every session that i lift uh, okay. At this point, I think we're starting to figure out um, that at this point in my career and looking towards competing in the master's divisions that I um, need to worry less about my strengths. So it's becoming a less of an emphasis in my programming um, and more just like keeping up my engine mm -hmm. um, just because I have a, a pretty good foundation of strength at this point, but still like the positions for sure matter. Yeah. Uh, and there's always yeah. little things to perfect. Like there's always stuff yeah. that you're working on. It never ends. But yeah. So, <laughs> so with your shoulder injury, so mm -hmm. we're like handstand pushups kind of like, I know obviously doing handstand pushups were pretty much like not an option. So is that kind of one of the weaknesses you're kind of working on just to hone in to get a little better at that? Or, or what are the other weaknesses that you're working on? Yeah. Well, the, um, the shoulder injury at first was, um, I had a problem with vertical pulling, so I couldn't do, uh, strict pull-ups, uh, you know, chest to bar muscle ups, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I could pull a barbell off the floor, but I couldn't hang and pull, um, which was interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> it took us a while to figure out that one. <laughs> but, um, but then I, uh, so, so for, from the end of the 21 season, um, 22, I don't know. I'm getting years mixed up. The one that I've barely missed the games <laughs> mm -hmm. by, by, um, one, by one point by one is, point which, yeah, which that is one. insane so <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah so at the end of that one I, I had to stop all pulling movements and we thought we were rehabbing some tendinosis so i was just not hanging and pulling i took all those movements out um and then in somewhere in like november um the rehab wasn't working but i i started to feel better so i started trying to bring pulling movements back um, and it 
jacked me up. I had, I was in the middle of a workout and it, um, I had like a nerve lockup yep. issue. Um, and from that point forward, all pressing movements became a problem. <laughs> and, so, uh, and so it was like, uh, I, I think knowing what I know now, I had a partial tear, Terry's minor. Um, and then I think what happened was that when I tried to bring pulling movements back, I, um, messed up my super spinatus. It was like 20% super spinatus. Um, and so then all pressing things became a problem and I couldn't do that either. Uh, and, um, couldn't do anything until I had, um, I had my treatment like four weeks before the open started. Okay. Um, and so was slowly building back movements all the way through last season. Um, and after the season ended, I finally took the time to like rest it. Um, so now I'm pain free uh, and it's all healed, fully healed, right, which is let's great. Go. Let's go. Uh, yeah. So then, yeah, this last off season has been totally pain free and we're just working on building capacity back. Um, okay. You know, it's weak because I hadn't used it. I wasn't able to use it properly for so long. Um, and then when I did use it, it was kind of just like you, we weren't training to like slowly build capacity back. We were training to like, you have to compete now. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Uh, and so, um, yeah. So now we're, you know, being smarter about progressions and things like that. And awesome. um, yeah, so we're just working on capacity, but nothing else is a, is a limiter. Yeah. So how are you liking the misfits, uh, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth gears workouts? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I hate them. <laughs> Oh, of course. Yeah. So, so, so for the, for the yes. listeners, so Misfit Athletics has a, has a, a section of their program called like the, um, you know, first, second, third, fourth, and like so on gear. Yeah. And so pretty much is, um, it's all aerobic capacity workouts, mm -hmm. like getting on the bike, running or doing something like that. And you have a time frame to hit these certain numbers and then you rest in between and you have to hit like the the certain gear it's like the fourth gear it means you got to mm -hmm. go faster from the last one so yeah the it's and they're long and they're they long and they're yes. brutal yeah <laughs> There's, whatever gear they want you to be in is like two gears higher than you want to be in for that time domain yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh I mean, but yeah, for me, that's if, if there was uh, something that I'm working on, that's it. Um, yeah. So that's just constantly what I'm working on um, is just living my life on the machines, trying to get better at them. Yeah, I, I, I try to do those gears, but the problem is like I it's just I literally only have like an hour and a half of time yeah for me to work out and so that's like it's hard for me to do that because they take so long that it's just yeah. like okay like obviously i mean i know strength is not really a concern for me because i'm doing yeah. pretty good so we're like doing the metcons or you know stuff like that it's just hard so i'll just do like the math sessions of like 45 mm -hmm. minutes on a machine and, and go but right. it's just like I, I it's just so hard for me to even do the do those getting into those yeah, gears they're like, like 35 40 minute workouts yeah and it's just yeah. like oh yeah i can't do that and like for instance like today's workout it was uh it was a, an 800 meter run um 15 no 20 uh, no 15 ghc sit-ups and then 24 kettlebell swings and yeah. so i kind of had to scale it because the gym has one ghd machine and they're like right. so and they're so far away from the treadmills and i right. it's like and i have to use the commercial treadmills too and i'm like Oh yeah. Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> and so, um, so anyway, so we kind of scaled the GHC, but in, instead of kettlebells, cause I was worried about, cause it was kind of like low ce ceilings where we were, I was worried about hitting it cause I'm so oh, no. damn tall. Yeah. So I'm like, I, we just, I saw what I did was they just did hang dumbbell snatches, but I'm like the run, I was just getting absolutely smoked on and it was like so hard. And then like my, my gym partner, he's like, he's shorter than me and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But he was like going at a higher pace. And I'm like, how the hell are you catching up to me at all time? And I'm like, what, 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 what like what level are you on? He's like at 0.5 higher than me. And I'm like, damn it. That's why. And I'm like, yeah. I gotta, I gotta get so better at these. But then like, if we do like box jumps or something like that, it's just like game yeah. over. He, he's like, right. just blows up. But yeah, 
but yeah, it's it's like one one thing I need to work on is just getting those gears, especially like doing those like crazy movements, especially for the open too. Yeah, yeah. Hunter and I have talked a lot about um, you know time management and like minimal effective dose, especially now that you know I've brought my training time down um, mm-hmm. from what it used to be. I can't just you know do all of the workouts anymore. I have to pick and choose, and so figuring out like what I have time for and how to fit it in and how to maximize the time that I have is like, that's a hard thing to do. And then there's like the things that you're like, Oh, I really want to do that. But what I need to do is (laughs) it's like, Oh, Oh, a heavy squat clean. Oh, yes, please. And I I will do that. And like, Oh, wait, I have to, it's either that or run. Oh, I like squat cleans. Let's go. Exactly. Like, exactly. Off, off, off the gram. Off of the gram. So. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, so the open is literally like nine days away, but this will be yeah, this will be out like during the open. So cool. what are what are your goals for this open? Uh honestly, I, I'm just looking to enjoy it with my community. Um and it'll be a a, a barometer for me of, all right, where am I at with the training that I've been doing? What's, what's that done for me? Um, it'll be a good test to feel out. Um, just like we were just talking about, have I used my time appropriately or do we need to make adjustments in what we emphasize in my training program? And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, I'm not very familiar with the master's division. I haven't really been focused on um, that wasn't my goal in the past. Um, and I knew I wasn't going to compete in that division. So I haven't really paid that close attention to, um, you know, where I stack up or what my competitors are doing in that division. And so um, I have to start paying attention to that and just kind of feel out where I am yeah, and what yeah. I need to work on. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were 17th worldwide last year. So thank you I think, for letting me know. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I think, I think you're good. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what what year what year of the open is is this for you oh uh i started in my first year was 2010 um and then i missed two years i missed two years because of injury so this should be 12 okay all right yeah, yeah i i didn't do last year so i'm at the nine year badge and it was funny because when I, w- I, I haven't signed up yet, I'm, I'm going to, but, um, but it was funny because they said, Hey, you know, I got an email from CrossFit saying, Hey, get your first year badge. So when you sign up for the open, I'm like, wait a second. No, I'm doing it. For- yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> I don't need a one year badge. I think it's, a, it's nine years. So oh, that's funny. Yeah. And it was just like, why would you give me just the one year? Cause I skipped last year. Like what's, yeah. what's yeah. the deal? So but yeah, I mean, maybe like the system didn't recognize you or probably, I mean, they're like, up oh, here's this tall white hockey. So he doesn't need to be on the board. So <laughs> for sure. But yeah. So I actually, I did, uh, which, which workout I did the, the, um, burpee, bu- the burpee pull-up workout with the running. Oh yeah. And then I did the one, one, uh, the one, uh, and the one max thruster. So, I mean, oh yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that so for me being the idiot, I instead of twenty five feet, I did thirty feet because I thought I went from like oh, no. one side. I I was like, oh, listen, I I'm just gonna see where I'm at, whatever. And so the I would just I touched the end of the mat and that was it. So like from the other side, it was actually realized it was thirty feet, and I'm like, whoops. Oh, okay, yeah. whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's like I'm it's no nothing off my back, so I'm not too worried about it. Yeah. So, but it was it was fun. I mean, I hit like two. I think 245 on a max threat thruster. So oh yeah. I was like, That's okay, awesome. I'll take it. Yeah. And That's then like sick. I and then I tried it again like a couple of weeks ago after that. And I hit 265. So I was like, Yeah, nice. I was like, okay. I mean, obviously you could tell barbell stuff's my my jam. So, That's your jam. Yep. Yeah. For some reason. But uh, but yeah, I'm That's I'm looking awesome. forward to hopefully do something, do some damage this year too. So um Yeah, do you have specific but, goals? I mean obviously make it to semis would be nice. And like, awesome. at least like, and I know there was like one workout, I think a couple of years ago, it was the toaster bar thrusters. And then it was this like 
the chest of bars to thrusters. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. The, yeah. That one. And then like the one rep max that. and the one rec one rep max, uh, uh-huh. complex. Yeah. If I literally put uh, like literally a, a half, a one pound plate on each side extra, yeah. I would have been in the top, top 10. Because they were literally, they were literally 30, 30 or 40 dudes with the same Mm -hmm. weight that I had. I was like, you suck. Yeah. Like, I was like, if I put like literally one extra pound, I would have been like, at least like in the top 20. And I'm like, sitting Mm -hmm. there like, God, this sucks. And then also, um, I do want to finish a workout. Like I do want to be like, you know, and, and like have more time to like sit, like not, not like not get hit with a time cap. Cause I, yeah, there's, yeah. Been, there, there's been times that I have been gotten hit, gotten hit with the time cap, but uh-huh. I just want to make sure that like every single work that I have, I don't get hit with that. Cool. So I don't know goals. And then the, goals. the other, and then the other problem is the gym that I go to is not a CrossFit gym. So I need to go to oh, another, yeah. I, I need to go to another gym and figure out like, right. how am I going to do this? And it's going to be like at five 30 in the morning, Ooh. you know? Yeah. Cause that's the only time I can do it. Life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's but yeah, tough. I know. Well, we'll see what happens. Whatever. I mean, I mean, I get, <laughs> I literally train at four 30 in the morning. So it's just like, whatever. You're nuts. Four yes, 30 in the morning. That's yeah. crazy. Get up at four and then get my clothes on, get ready to go. And it's funny. Um, so I actually do the misfit accessory works, accessory work for my warm up. Yeah. Awesome. So I was just like, that's cool. Kill two birds with one stone. I was yeah. just like, at least I can get like a couple things and then right. go to the lift and then the Metcon and then be done. Love that. So yeah. And like I told, I told a couple other people I did that too. And they're like, wow, I never really thought about doing that. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> why not? It's so easy. That's cool. Yeah. So easy. But I like uh, that. but yeah, also um, I forgot to mention congratulations on you being an official like sharpen the axe like misfit. Oh, thank you. Athletic athlete. Cause like <laughs> Because the last time we talked, you, I think like a month, a month or two later on, you mm, actually got probably got picked yeah. to be a, a misfit mm-hmm. athlete. So what, what does that mean for you? It's super cool. I mean, I've been a misfit athlete for a really long time. Mm-hmm. Um, since 2018, I've been on the misfit program. So like, okay. been like six years. Yeah. Um, and I think that you know, it's, it's the program that I found that's done the most for me as an athlete. I've seen Mm -hmm. so much progress in myself, um, both on the teams that I've been on and as an individual. Um, and so it just kind of means a lot to have so much alignment with the brand and have so much buy-in. Um, it's, you know, it wasn't one of those situations where it's like a sponsor reaches out to you and, you know, it's like a transactional thing. It was just like a really, natural like i'm already doing this we're already supporting each other i want you to succeed you want me to succeed like you know it 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 feels very cool to um i don't know just feel like a part of the team you know yeah um in a way that's a little more integrated than you know following their program or yeah no i i i completely agree and i i love um how the it, it's it's grown especially with like discord i, I don't really post yeah, Discord, but like I know. <laughs> but even like even like instagram and stuff like that like i'll post a lift and like they typically mm-hmm. respond being like heck yeah that was awesome like you know yeah. and stuff like that and, and that's it's so cool because i don't even know if like a lot of these other programs would actually do that yeah that's I I think that that's cool. I think that there is such a human element. I don't I honestly couldn't tell you either. I haven't been a part of any other program. Yeah, I've been with Misfit for a very long time. I've been with well, Misfit so. for a long time and before that I was either my own coach or my coaches were like in my CrossFit gym. Um so I I haven't really I think we did I think we followed Invictus for like a hot minute at some point but (laughs) but like but so i don't i don't have a ton of experience but um but even before i was a sponsored athlete like the year before um you know i was at semifinals and um like 
I had misfit athletes reaching out to me on day three, like sending me the like really nice messages. You know, I'm like on the cusp of making it or not making it to the games. And like, this is day three. It's like, you know, time to put everything out there. And, um, and like people that like, I've never met them. I don't, you know, I don't know them except that they're another misfit athlete that, and you know, they, you know, were sending me messages cheering for me and, and like really, really personal, very genuine messages, not just like, you know, Hey, congrats. The LFG, Keep it going. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, go. yeah. Not just like, you know, but like, re- like really genuine, like very personal messages. And I just thought yeah. that was so cool. You know, it was so cool to like, feel like, even though, um, I never met them in person that, you know, feel like you have more of a team behind you than the people that are physically present. Yeah. I, I think it's one of the best teams around and yeah. I obviously of course I'm biased, but yeah, but still, <laughs> but still like you have a group of people on discord, social media, and like they're in like, e- even like, especially on Instagram, they're so easy to get a hold of. Yeah. Compared to compared to oh, other yeah. athletes, so, you know, even like like some of them have large numbers, and it's just like right. they'll respond back because they know that you're part of Misfit, and they're like, you know, yeah. it's it's great. That it's in like the Discord group's pretty fun too. It is. It so. is. I think they do a really good job of communication. Yeah, in mm-hmm. in the Discord and responding to messages, even like they put so much content out there that's so valuable. Um, yeah. Even even like the pod- even the podcast too. Yeah, yeah. the podcast. podcast. Like, Mm-hmm. If, if you, even if you're not following misfit athletics, like there's, they always put some like, right. you know, nuggets in there for mm-hmm. like just any athlete to, to listen to. And they're like, Oh yeah. no, I never thought about that. You know, stuff right. like that. Yeah. So, um, and also how do you like the, uh, sharpen the ax gear? Oh, I love to sharpen the ax gear. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. No, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, um, no, obviously, you obviously you have, you have a promo code, so it's mm-hmm. probably Kelly cause Kelly, <laughs> yeah, Kelly, Kelly. And so, um, <laughs> but yeah, how, how does, so how does the, like, you know, getting the promo, like someone typing your name in the promo code and how does that help? How does that help you? And also it helps me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Kelly will give you a discount on sharpen the ax gear on proper fuel um on misfit programming and um it helps me it supports me i get uh, a percentage of that as well and um so it helps support my competition season in that awesome. sense yeah 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 it helps you with like traveling or anything you know travel yeah registration food mm-hmm. Yeah. All that yep. stuff. Living arrangements, all that Adds stuff. Adds up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so are you, are you actually going to do Wadapalooza in California this year? I would like to. Okay. Yeah. I got my eye on it for sure. I, um, they haven't put much information out yet. I don't, we don't know anything about like the divisions or the structure of it yet. Yeah. Um, so kind of still waiting to hear, but I definitely have my eye on it. It's, um, Anytime there's a competition where I get to swim, especially in warm water, I'm down. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I've, I've always wanted to go to Waterpalooza in Miami, and I'm like thinking, I'm like, so this one in, in California is mm-hmm. close to my birthday, so oh. I'll be the big 45, and I'm like, maybe I can get into a competition like the weightlifting competition or or whatever, there, yeah. like maybe we'll yeah. see and i'm like and if someone wink wink if someone <laughs> has a booth and they're looking for someone that needs to, that wants to do a podcast in their booth i'm available so, um, <laughs> there you go. but yeah it's so just, putting it out uh, there yeah yeah so i mean i don't mind checking that place out because i've the last time i was in california we was, was with the military and that was near sandy san francisco and it wasn't near Okay. What, where Wadapalooza is. So it, obviously right. I know it's a lot different from where, what San Francisco's like. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would like to see venture out like kind of down there and see what it's all about. Yeah. I know hunting Huntington beach should be really cool. It's warmer water than it is, than there is up here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so how, how far of a drive is it down there for you? Uh, it'll be six ish hours. I believe. That's crazy. Six hour drive. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. But um, we're getting close to the end. So I, I have some rapid fire questions. Okay. 
they're not rapid fire. You can take as long as you want. <laughs> um, but um, so obviously, you know, this is the beginning of the year. So do you have any like personal goals or, you know, fitness goals you want to achieve? I know you kind of talked about them earlier, but is there any, is there anything else that you want to like get this year? Um, I think really this year I'm looking to, um, you know, pursue some growth in my coaching career and, um, find a way to strike that balance between competing, um, mm. and being able to compete still at a high level. Um, but also, um, you know, take care of my family life and my career. And so this year really is kind of just about finding new rhythms and feeling out what that means for me. I, I yep. kind of hesitate, like, uh, balance is a word that gets thrown around a lot. Um, but I'm not really someone who does balance. <laughs> I'm still kind of like an all in kind of person with whatever I'm doing. Same, same you know? here. Same, it is so bad. So <laughs> yeah. Bad. So I don't really need balance per se, but like new rhythm with new priorities, trying to still do things, you know, at a really high level. I like, you know, I don't like, if I'm going to do something, I don't like doing it poorly. So just making sure that I'm optimizing the things that are most important to me in my life. So figuring, figuring out, that new rhythm is just kind of my goal. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So I know you like learning. So do mm -hmm. you have a favorite book that you like to read? Uh, I, I think I know what it is. It's the weightlifting, <laughs> it's the weightlifting, weightlifting book. So it's like, you know, the real thick one is it, that's your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> no, man, I don't have a particular favorite. I don't think. Um, so many books. Um, I think one of my favorites recently um, has been Atomic Habits. Okay. And okay. Outlive. Um, those are two that I've read within like the last couple of years, I think, that I really, really liked. Um, otherwise, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I read a lot. I go through a lot of books. So I have a book. I, I have a book for you. I'm not okay. affiliated with them. I, I, it's a good book so far. I'm Let's like, hear it. it's, I'm like three quarters of the way done. So it's called the success principles. Oh, I like it. Okay. So, so the gen, the gentleman that wrote the book was the author from chicken soup for the soul. Yeah. Wow. So that's he like high school. <laughs> yeah. So, so, well, I mean, that's, that's older for me, but anyway, don't, don't, don't throw <laughs> okay, it off. Sorry. Uh, so, so, but like he, he, the way he talks about like certain situations, he said there's like in the book, there's like 50 situations to kind of help you be successful in what you, what you want to do. And so I think I'm at like 38 or something like that, but some of them are like, it is crazy easy. And I'm like, Holy cow. I never even thought about maybe doing it that way instead of this way. And so cool. yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's bananas. It's like just reading that. And then also um, there's a YouTube book that I, that I just got. I forgot. Oh man. Um, I, I'll, I'll send it to you, but it's a good book. Cause I know you, I know you have a YouTube channel. I know you haven't really done much with it, but I haven't know. done a lot with it lately, yeah. but, but you, yeah. need to, you need to get back on it. But, uh, okay. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so there's enough, it's like try to grow a, grow a following on YouTube or something like that. So okay. it's, it's those two books are pretty, the, the one with uh, YouTube is like a super quick read. Okay. So. Try to go following on YouTube and the success principle. Yes. Yeah. I okay. don't, don't ask you who the guy's name is, but I, I just read, right. just, I, just type I'll in the success it. principles. Yeah. <laughs> it, so. um, oh, thank you. I haven't heard of either of those. Yeah. So I'll, I'll actually send you a picture of it too. So, cool. um, yeah. so I think we talked about this one before, but how do you want people to know you as? Yeah. Um, I think I want, people to know me as somebody who um, isn't afraid to chase big dreams that, you know, is all in, that's committed and dedicated to, you know, what I set myself out to do. Um, and at the same time, I want 
people to know me as someone who is a good person and sportsmanlike and has integrity. Those are things that are really important to me. So, um, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess to keep it short, that's, um, yeah. Just want to be a good person too. I want to be a good person. Yeah. I want to yeah. be a good person. Yeah. Um, you know, first and foremost, I want that, you know, um, I want people to know me as someone who has a good positive attitude and has a good positive influence on the people who are around them. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to be a living example of what it takes and um, what it looks like to go after the things that you love. Awesome. Very cool. Um, and so what is in your gym bag? Oh, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do you have? <laughs> we, I, I, we have a good amount. Don't worry. So. Okay. <laughs> um, also, which gym bag? <laughs> you have two? <laughs> I Three? have like the bag lady. I come packed for my entire day when I go to the gym. Gosh, um, I can't I can't imagine when you get older, you're probably gonna have one of those like metal baskets and like have like 20 billion <laughs> bags on there and just yeah. like carrying that around. So I, that, I that's so gonna be you. I know it. It is, it is. <laughs> my poor husband it stresses him out to no end. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um okay I have the well the Haven athletic bag um, is a lifesaver. Okay. I was, I was going to ask you that too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so I have that one as my like gym bag. Um, and I've got man, everything that you could possibly need to do anything CrossFit I have in that bag. I've got, um, probably at any given time, I've got at least three pairs of shoes in there. Um, you know, three? damn yeah, runners, Metcons, lifters. Um, and then, yeah, sometimes I can fit four in there. Uh, knee sleeves, weight belt, thumb tape, wrist wraps, couple pairs of grips, uh, several pairs of the Sharpen the Axe sweatbands because I always have to have one available to match whatever outfit I'm wearing. <laughs> of course. Of course. And, uh, uh, man, headbands, uh, voodoo floss. Uh, I always keep, um, Sage, uh, they have like a CBD muscle cream that I like, um, several jump ropes, uh, all the hair things like the, you know, like, well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's all the hair that's things. A, that's an necessity. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's necessary. Yes. I, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, headphones. Mm, toe spacers that might and be anything, i'm probably and, forgetting uh, things but, um, okay well I yeah mean, that, but then good. i have like yeah so that's like a gym bag and then i have like a food bag like i carry a six pack then i have <laughs> i usually well, have you're little, pair you're, of clothes yeah, with me you're literally <laughs> working out and then you have the coach like like later on too right and so it's just like yeah, yeah. of course you need to have clothes and food and everything like that but yeah no i'm in the gym before 6 a.m and i'm there until 4 4 4 30 in the afternoon mm -hmm. so it's like you know i come packed for my whole day yeah all my supplements all my food all my you know clothes yeah. change of clothes <laughs> yep i hear you um so where actually um the next question is um Obviously, like, you know, you get tons of, you you, know, you you were saying, like, you have people reach out to you, like, to be a, you know, to sponsor their stuff and whatnot. So what are some, what are some things that you would like to see for, to be sponsored with somebody, like a company? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I guess the things that I look for in working with a company. Um, I like to know the people that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess back to that, you know, um, integrity and being a good person are really important to me. So, um, it matters to me what that company is all about and what their messaging looks like. And, um, 
you know, who the person is on the other end of the line. Uh, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, we're sort of representing each other, right? You know, um, I represent their brand, but also like anything that they put out there, any messaging that they put out there is going to reflect on me. And that's something that, you know, I want to make sure is in alignment with my personal values and um, things that I use. Also, you know, I have trust built with my members, and, you know, the people that I coach and the community at large who follow me and watch me. Um, yep. And uh, I, you know, very important to me that I like get behind the product and I use the product and it um, that I, I can honestly find it valuable. Um, you know, otherwise that, you know, be broken trust between myself and anyone that I would recommend it to. So I, I think that that's, um, yeah, those are, those are things I look for. I want to, I want to know the brand. I want to know that they're good people. I want to know yeah. that they're, um, living a life of integrity and that they're striving to put out something that is valuable to the best of their ability as well. Yeah. So just to let you know, the, the, the three companies underneath me, all, a comp all the companies I work with, I wear all their stuff. Nice. So, so it's big, big fan of all, all three of those companies. So they're like super nice and yeah, this stuff does not stink. So yeah, it's good. <laughs> yes. so I, it does not. <laughs> no, no. Like, especially with like knee sleeves or like anything else, like you get like some like company oh, yeah. that's like pretty cheap and you're like, oh, this is not, not good. And it's right. like, why do I have to like, I would literally have to buy like multiple pairs of X just to, right. you know, have them look good for some of the, some of the shots that I did need to do. So it's like, yeah, it's not worth it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, I've definitely had companies, um, reach out to me in the past that, you know, want to send me stuff in exchange for promotion. I'm kind of just like, I don't use that, you know, and not, not that necessarily they don't make a good product. I, I wouldn't know. I don't use that. You know, there's just things that I use and things that I don't use. Yeah. Um, just, you know, like I wear wrist wraps, some athletes don't need them, you know, that's, you know, that's just kind of a thing. And, you know, I'm not going to promote something that I don't use. Yeah. Um, so that's like, yeah, I think, and then having a, a good quality product is, Key. key yes that's yes. key <laughs> yeah. so last question so where can people reach out to you if they have any questions about you know possibly being on the seminar staff like mm -hmm. dealing with marriage you know yeah. being, a, being a master's athlete like you name it like where can people reach out to you if they have any questions uh yeah uh usually my instagram is the best way to reach me so uh i am kelly kelly i am dot kelly dot kelly um yeah, message me there. I usually respond not always very quickly. I don't always have my phone on me. You, you have coaching. a life. Yes. I do. I do. Yes. But I will respond. Um, yeah, maybe not. I don't know if you ask me marriage questions. Like, I don't know if I'm a pro at that yet, but we're doing all right so far. We're over here. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're good. So at Disclaimer. least, the, yeah, yeah. The, the, the first couple of years of marriage, you know, right. guidance. So. <laughs> Well, well, thank you for coming on. Listen, I really do appreciate it. And like, it's always fun, you know, sitting down and chat with you. And it's also like, I've, I've listened to other podcasts that have, that have you been, that you've been on. And it's like, so, so fun to listen to those conversations too, as well. So, oh, cool. thank you know, thank you. Th th thank you for coming on and uh, yeah, I'd love to have you back on again. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's always nice talking to a fellow misfit. And, That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll I'm a Michigan fan. Yes, go blue, go blue. All right, go I'll blue. talk to you later. Have a good one, Tom.